Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So we've got 3.18 starting at 5 a.m. in the morning tomorrow, at least the Australian time, that is. And I thought I'd do a really quick video. Obviously, Delve is my go-to out of everything in the game. And uh, I thought I'd go through like five tips to get you started or at least get you sort of set up for Delve. Um, we'll talk about getting started with Delve. So I guess when you sh should start delving. And I have heard some stupid comments from people in the past about leveling throughout the campaign with Delve. No, don't do that. But uh, anyway, what levels or what target uh, depth you want to go to. Um, and then we'll talk about Atlas setup, um, prioritizing Delve nodes. So when I talk about that, the Voltaxic generator. So what we want to focus on in here. Um, and then we'll talk about obviously the chase items that you would make currency out of Delve. And then last of all, fossils, which is obviously consistency based farming. But anyway, let's get in the video and, uh, and yeah, let's get into some uh, five tips to get you started for Delve and 3.18. Okay, so I've heard this before where people have started playing Delve as soon as they got access to it. I think it's like Act 6 or maybe a little bit later on, something like that. Um, maybe Act 5. Uh, my advice to anyone getting into Delve is do not start Delving until you actually finish the campaign. Do not level in Delve. Get all your points that you need to before you get into Delve. Delve is an end game mechanic. It is not a campaign mechanic. And I've seen people try and speed level through Delve. It's not a good idea. And it's not going to give you an advantage. Get your character past um, the campaign from Act 10. Obviously complete Act 10. Get it into mapping. And then that's when you can start delving. The main reason is you can't sustain Delve throughout playing campaign. The other thing is you will eventually have to complete the campaign because you can't progress into endgame without having finished the campaign. So that's pretty much my like first thing that you should know um, about delving unless in the case anyone's ever heard the rumor of, oh, I can just level up um, in delve. No, really stupid idea, will not work for you. Somebody might start an argument in the comment about it, but honestly, I've never known that to work very well. And I've been playing a lot of delve as you guys know from my videos. Um, and so the further question there is like, what level should you target or what depth should you target in Delve? Well, generally it depends on the type of character. In the case of this RF Inquisitor, super tanky and its ability to be able to tackle Delvers, you know, down to 600 plus down to 800. And that's obviously a lot of armor and, uh, and, you know, overcapping of, um, defensive stats, like, you know, you know your resistances and everything, max capping, uh, block, max capping, chaos resist where possible uh, not every character can do that and obviously this character is geared towards the lower depths um, but if you're really targeting a good zone to hit is about 200 to 300 so that's where you're going to hit you know your four socket resonators quite frequently also the crystal king becomes available after i think about level 171 um which you know is is quite far down so you know we're talking 61 we're moving down, down, down. Let's get out of that screen. And obviously I dissected off down here, uh, 153, uh, down to 188. And then, you know, about 200 is where you want to be. So those are a couple of things just to be aware of when you're starting out in Delve. And we'll talk about how the um, how your Voltaxic generator should be set up next. But those are a few things that you should know. Now, other things like cities, absolutely do them. Uh, farm the Lich's Tomb, farm the um, the Architect, the Val Architect, uh, as he's down here, and the uh, Crystal King. I'll talk about why you should farm those later in this video. Um, and they are worth the currency that's going to drop from them. Delve is one of the more consistent, productive farming techniques in the game. And it's much more approachable for people who do not have time to go, you know, and farm crazy gear or learn cra crazy crafting mechanics and things like that. So... In my case, I work a full-time job. I, de I delve farm to fund all the builds that I plan that you guys see in videos um, because it is relatively liquid currency. And as the further down you go, the more currency you're going to make from the volume of fossils and you can sell in bulk and all sorts of shit like that. So from my perspective, and this is not shared by everybody, I consider Delve to be incredibly profitable and I've known it to be incredibly profitable. The first few days of League, not so much. Um, when you start getting perfect fossil drops and things like that, even better. 
The other benefit of doing Delve is that it's going to give you the fossils and the resonators that you need to craft your gear up early if you're going to self-craft your gear. And in particular, if you're an SSF player, Delve is actually a really good mechanic to be able to get the mats you need to craft your endgame gear. Um, be it that you have the right item level on the gear and, and you know influences and things like that. So those are a few really sort of what you should know is about getting started with Delve and the reason why Delve is really good at the starter league and consistently throughout um, is at this stage of the game, it's one of the better ways to craft the gear that you need. Obviously, you've got harvest farming and you've got expedition and everything else and everybody has a different way of playing the game. But at least from my perspective, Delve is the best mechanic from a consistent uh, currency generation perspective. The only one other way that I know of that would be consistent from starter league uh, is heist and heist has really good um, sort of lower currency drop rates as well. And that'll sort of get you in the door to get you started um, at starter league. But um, those are a few. So that, that that's at least my methodology on it or my mindset. Obviously that's not what everybody thinks, but for me, Delve is, is it. And plus I enjoy the mechanic. Uh, some people don't, it's not a mechanic for everybody. But if you, uh, if you get into Delve, it is actually quite a rewarding mechanic to get into. And you never quite feel like you're losing out because, you know, you've got currency nodes all through here as you go down. And, you know, you can get really good uniques in Delve or just drops themselves, uh, Spectre Chess and all that sort of shit. So it's a really good mechanic, uh, definitely worth learning. That's why I always recommend it. And it's a good currency generator, even though it's probably not going to make you 20 exalt or 50 exalt an hour like some uh, techniques might where you know and then we're talking like the one percent of players but the rest of us plebs um delve is gonna get you into that next rung where you're gonna be able to gear up and take on the uber bosses and things like that um at the minimum level but uh, anyway let's get into the next part of the uh the video which is the atlas setup okay so atlas setup wise um delve is pretty easy to actually reach you're going to be looking at the um the right side of the tree and you start with this delve node down here and what you'll see is where the lo nodes not light up that's where you're looking at so you have four key nodes being this node uh this node down here you've got up here and i think that's also delve there so sulfite and fusion um everything else you can hit your expedition nodes if you want to farm expedition so i've got all my expedition nodes um obviously these main cluster nodes here um, and i'm pretty sure there's another one somewhere else yeah down here um, so if you want to play Expedition and you want to farm Astragalis, you can delve and do Astragalis at the same time. Obviously, we'll have the new um, Keystone nodes that are coming out in the tree. But um, this is pretty much the easiest pathing. So it's pretty much just coming up in this third node or fourth node across. And then following this line, picking up your node here. You come up, you pick your node up here um, for mining byproducts. And then you grab your Sulfite Infusion. And then you can do whatever else you want with your tree. Like we're not really targeting anything major here. Um, and sulfite infusion is particularly important because you're going to get sulfite from every single map that you're doing. So you're going to be consistently able to manage your, uh, your sulfite levels. Um, and definitely with last league and, uh, even with 3.18, because they didn't really make any changes to delve. Um, and the sulfite generation is the amount of quests that you get from Nico. Um, and also, uh, you know, the amount of sulfite that's available just to farm from scarab drops and things like that you're not going to have any issues with sustaining Delve. Um, literally, you know, the easiest path. I'll have a see, look and see if I can export this tree. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much your uh, your setup here. So uh, you can do whatever you want with it. I've actually, and this is on my standard account, I've got a Bissell Duels ticked on because I thought it was cool and something different to farm. But uh, yeah, really simple to set the tree up and you can farm pretty much every anything else you want. You, you know, you could diverge, you could sort of not go this route and you could go up here. And, you know, you could target something else like Metamorph or, you know, Delirium. If you wanted to, cut across here and hit Delirium. Once you sort of understand where everything is in this tree and what you want to farm, then it's really easy to um, to get to what you need. But uh, that's pretty much Atlas set up. So super easy. Just uh, this node down here. You're targeting this node here. Um, and this gets you guarded hordes and uh, packed with energy. You're targeting this node here for mining byproducts. And then you're targeting Sulfite and Fusion. And then, yeah, the world is your oyster after that. All right, so the next thing you need to know about starting with Delve is how you prioritize your use of Azurite. So Azurite is the blue currency that you get within Delve. So if we had a look, you, you hit all these different Azurite cavities. 
um, and you get azurite veins, and then that's how you upgrade Delve. So, and that, you know, it plays for like your fusing, uh, your flares and your uh, dynamite, things like that. So in your Voltaxic generator, generally when I start Delve, I'll start with adding a little bit of sulfite capacity and then I'll work on darkness resistance and then I'll work on lightness ra uh, light radius. And these cap at 75% and 150%. Generally, you just need a little, like maybe put like two or three or four um, sort of upgrades into your sulfite cap and get it up to like 10 or 12,000 as soon as you can. And then you want to focus on as much darkness resistance as you can put in. Now, remember the lower you go, the more your darkness resistance will wind back up. And so you'll need to keep pumping Azurite into it. And the same with light radius. And these are uh, inversely or that they're dependent upon each other. You need to sort of balance between the two. If you're starting to die in Delve, then you need more light radius or potentially better darkness resistance. Because once that darkness hits, if you're not a tanky enough character, it's going to rip you apart. Now, flares, you can do with three flares probably until like level 50 to 100, but try and get to like five or 10 flares as soon as possible, but don't start pumping currency into flares until you've got enough darkness resistance and depth. Um, and that this, it's just a little bit of a balancing act, but if you wanted a sequence of like one through two, whatever, uh, number one, put some uh, points into capacity so you can sustain more delve. Number two, put some points into darkness resistance next, and then number three, light radius, and then prioritize your flares fourth. And obviously dynamite, you're going to get three dynamite, I think it is straight off the cuff. So don't worry so much about dynamite until, until you start to go down further. And realistically, you're going to be able to upgrade this really easily. So that's pretty much the sequence of, uh, of how to set this, uh, this uh, Voltaxic generator up. So nothing crazy. That's all you really need to know about it. Um, it's pretty straightforward other than that. Okay, so in relation to the chase uniques that you can farm out of Delve, I probably would say this. So there's three types of bosses in Delve. One is the uh, the Val Architect, the other is the um, the Lich, and the other, which is my favorite to farm, is the Crystal King. Now, <clears throat> each of these particular bosses drop different types of unique items. Uh, there's a few things that you should know about this though. From a currency perspective, it can be quite profitable. So just sort of talking through really roughly, the item that I generally target is the All's Uprising. And in particular, the Determination rolled All's Uprising. And this drops off the Crystal King. The reason why I go for this item is uh, generally it sells for like anywhere up to 10 to 20x uh, from the starter league and even with the through within league um, with very little drop in price. Literally one of the most valuable items you will get as far as running builds that use determination because what it means is determination has no reservation cost. Uh, so you can run more auras um, at the expense of an amulet, which already gives you increased maximum life, 20% armor and everything else in between. Now there are other variations of this, uh, which you know has, uh, for example, Grace has no reservation, um, no reservation cost as with Zealotry and different other skills like that. So if you get on a run after about 171, depth 171, uh, you could potentially horizontally farm and just smash Crystal Kings um, for all's uprisings. Now, the other other items that'll drop down there will be things like the Crown of the Tyrant, um, which is yet another item used in particular on uh, uh, animated guardians, which will basically get, give you and your nearby enemy or allies increased damage to you know nearby enemies which is really valuable also nearby enemies have uh negative 10 percent to um all resistances now this helm only has one socket but it's an incredibly incredibly powerful helm um and perfect on ags or animate guardians um the other thing that you should be aware of is you also have a suite of rings that drop from each of the omnitech the lich and the uh, crystal king uh, in particular, my favorite is Putambo rings, just because I like the way that it sounds. Um, but I put them up on screen. And the reason why these are so important is because there is three different types of recipes that come out of this. So, or four actually, and you can actually create precursor rings with a combination of these three rings. As long as one is a meadow ring, one is a mountain ring, and one is a valley ring. Um... And that means you, that you can craft some really, really, really powerful um, precursor rings, which, you know, could help you, for example, generate frenzy charges or generate power charges or 
any number of different combinations um, or give you particular mods based on those uh, those sort of charge generators and whatnot. So, and also give you crazy things like, you know, increase percentage increased life, um, you know, base stats, things like that. So if you didn't want to use crafted rings, you could simply use a combination of these rings. Uh, and I'll put links in the description of what you should be aware of. Um, and to be honest with you, the individual rings themselves sell for about 50 chaos apiece. So if you're just farming these bosses and they are down there in abundance, in particular architects and liches, um, you can smash these bosses all day long and just sell rings and purely profit or sell precursor rings for one to two X apiece. So for anyone who says that Delve is not profitable, well, they've never played Delve. It is incredibly profitable. Outside of that, uh, there are some other items like the Cerberus Limb, which is worthless, and Commander Pit, which are just really good leveling items. Um, you can get Soul Rest, but it's not really a build that's played anymore. Um, but that's the main chase uniques that I would be after if uh, if I was going down, or if I'm going down and delve, is just smashing bosses, collecting rings, and uh, and also collecting all uprisings. But uh, yeah, that's those are some of the reasons why it's worth farming, and you can use these items for your builds, and they're fantastic items. Delve is such an underrated chase unique area. It's got some of the best items in the game, as far as I'm concerned. The all's uprising is the best amulet in the game. Um, second only to the ashes of stars but uh anyway that's uh that's point number four for this uh for this um tips guide okay finally my last tip here is going to be just around fossils and the sale of fossils now i've always, i've done currency guides and i'll put a link in the description to one of my currency guides as well um as far as delving for currency and you know we'll probably do an updated video this league but anyway we're, we're at league start so you know let's get let's get new to it um, so pretty much the obvious thing is that Delve, you know, where some of these fossils do drop, and this was at the end of League as well, so this was in the last seven days, so um, th this is just POB, uh, this is the POE Ninja e economy sheet for fossils as they were, you know, when League ticked over. But as you'll see, like Glyphics and Fractions, these actually drop really commonly, as well as uh, Faceteds and Magma, I think Magma Chambers uh, for Faceteds. Um, but these drop really commonly after about Delve 3, 350. Um, we're talking like at one point, Shudderings are going like 7 Chaos. Bounds at starter lead because a lot of players play Necromatic Builds or Necromancers. They usually trade for about 8 Chaos off the, off the cuff and these drop in abundance. So, you know, you might get like 4 drop at once and if they're selling for 8C each, you know, you're making really good currency off that. Same with Deft and, uh, and Gilded's. Uh, prismatics drop commonly and then obviously you got things like dense fossils which are really good if you're playing es based characters you can craft gear really quickly um these lower ticket items aren't really that important all the way up to jaggeds or or really dense fossils or even bloodstains aren't really worth much um but yeah these uh, perfect fossils in particular still trading at 5c even on closer league um the reasons why you want to use perfects are 30 percent of your gear um or beyond um, and they sell straight away. So as soon as you put them in your stash tab, you set it to, you know, price for the market straight away, it goes straight up in bulk and bam, someone's going to uh, someone's going to buy it, but you know, really quickly. Um, and this is why I enjoy Delve because it's really easy to flip currency straight away. And then you can buy your scarabs if you need to buy scarabs and then just completely self fund it because not a lot of, unfortunately, Delve is just one of those mechanics that a lot of people steer clear of. Either they don't understand it or there's a lot of other mechanics in the game and they want to all farm mage bloods. Um, sometimes not farming for mage bloods and farming Delve is a better option, especially if you're a newer player. And I find players who struggle to make currency, Delve is going to be your go-to to make that currency. Now, the other option you can sort of go with is selling resonators. And in particular, these resonators, you know, they drop in abundance from like level 100 onwards like you're just gonna have resonators being thrown at your face every five seconds um and in particular these prime chaotics drop really quickly from about delve 100 onwards i think it is um and all you have to do is hit a uh, a resonator trove bam you've made i think these were trading at a high of like 40 chaos at one point or up to 50 chaos so you know, you, you will make just tons of currency from selling resonators. At one point, these were selling for like three chaos each, and you have like a stash of, you know, 30 resonators selling for three chaos, you know, from one run. So, you know, you walk away with 90 chaos out of that. Like, 
Th and this is what I mean, like, it's a combination of all the different crafting mats that you get down in Delve, as well as just the raw chaos drops themselves. Um, when you're starting a new league, it's just a really good mechanic to play to get early currency um, and level your character up. It's really consistent level up down there. But um, that's the other other side. So not only smashing bosses down there and farming, you know, chase unique items and, you know, items like All's Uprisings and Butumbo Rings and things like that and Crown of the Tyrants to sell, but also just the consistent amount of currency that you get even beyond that. You're not probably not going to sell gear for like 50, 50 X a piece. Um, though the further down you go, the more fossils you get and the higher bulk you can sell. And for people who are funding their builds via other means, um, it becomes really profitable if you're a fossil miner because not everybody mines fossils. And honestly, you can just tune out and horizontally farm. And if you've got a good build like RF or Vortex, you can uh, you can pretty much farm all day long, listen to beats, and uh, and you know two hours will go by. You'll be in Delve, and you'll just have a shitload of fossils. You'll sell them straight away. You walk away with hundreds and hundreds of chaos, if not X's worth of chaos, and then you know you're sitting back laughing. Um, and also the XP you get off uh, Delve, you know when you get to that end game, is really good to get characters to like level high 90s or you know beyond but uh anyway that's pretty much it for the uh for the currency portion uh, or i guess the fossil portion there's not a lot to this i'll put my currency guide in the video as well and i'll talk about biomes and how to target fossils and things like that um but yeah that's pretty much the uh the last tip that i've got okay so hopefully this uh this sort of delve starter guide for 3.18 gives you a um a bit of an idea of how to roll out with delve i know i haven't really done a guide like this before um, and most people don't really target Delve as a currency generator um, at league start because they discredit it. But for us normal players that work and don't have time to try and farm 20,000 Astragali and whatever, um, this is a really good method of making really good currency early up. It's rewarding. You get some really good gear for yourself um, as well as potentially really good fractured items down in Delve. Um, just an overall really good sort of game mechanic. I think it's just sort of lost its luster over the last few leagues. Maybe it needs a renew or maybe, you know, there's a few hardcores that just love Delve. I love Delve, obviously. But uh, yeah, if this is something that uh, that catches your fancy, then drop me a like, drop me a sub. Um, there'll be definitely more videos on Delve. There's always more videos on Delve. I love it as a mechanic. I think it's great. Endless delving or endless mining through the pits of... Uh, Pits of hell in uh, POE is always fun. But uh, anyway, I'll see you guys on League Launch. And uh, until next time, have a good one and uh, bye.